Coming up, traditional Cherokee basket weaver Bessie Russell takes us along as she picks wild vines that will eventually be transformed into something like this. For one about that size, it would probably take about 30 inches. What she's doing to ensure her craft is passed down to younger generations. And... History is made, ladies and gentlemen. There's our four-time state champion, White Sheets. She just kind of threw me out there with the wolves and... I'm kind of beginning to lead the pack, so. And artist Ryan Lee Smith shares the secret that pushes him to create award-winning contemporary art. There's so many things I want to just recreate, represent, build, and tear up, and burn down, and it's hard to contain. How breaking art's rules led him to his creative style. The Cherokees. A thriving American Indian tribe. Our history. Our culture. Our people. Our future. The principles of a historic nation sewn into the fabric of a modern world. Hundreds of thousands strong. Learning. Growing. Succeeding. And steadfast. In the past, we have persevered through struggle. But the future is ours to write. OCO. 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 These are the voices of the Cherokee people. OCO, I'm Principal Chief Bill John Baker. Welcome to the Cherokee Nation and OCO TV. This is how we share our culture, our heritage, our history, and our language with you. What do? OCO, it's how we say hello in Cherokee. In this episode, we'll visit a contemporary artist who says he was flooded with inspiration when he moved home to Oklahoma, and a four-time high school state wrestling champion whose family is creating a local wrestling legacy. But first, traditional basket weaving with Cherokee national treasure, Bessie Russell. Bessie has passed her craft down through three generations and created some of the Cherokee nation's most prized modern day baskets. <laughs> Okay, I'll uh, start with who I am. I'm Bessie Russell and I'm one of the living treasures and I've been weaving baskets for over 40 years. Gun or sausage is how we say it, isn't it? Gun or sausage, that means broom. They used to get all that buck brush and they made brooms a long time ago. Gun yeah, or sausage. Uh, if you don't know, you gotta learn how to identify it first, you know, and, and it grows. Not not tall, maybe three feet tall, and, and it grows berries, <laughs> and that's the easiest way to identify it is those little berries, you know, they just kind of clusters, you know, not very big. That's the best one, if you can get some like that. But... Well, I went to school at Rocky Ford. Of course, I just went up to the eighth grade, and after that, I went to school at Oaks. I hated it. <laughs> of course, when I started to school, I couldn't even I couldn't speak English at home, you know. My uh, dad could, you know, speak a little bit, but it was all kind of, what they say, broken, <laughs> broken English. And my mom, she never would, she never did talk English to us, so that's all we knew. If you want to be a traditional basket maker or call yourself a ba traditional basket maker, then you've got to, uh, you got to start from the bottom. First, you go gather. Then you boil it. And then you strip it. And then sometimes I even I've even had to uh, to bleach it a little bit, you know. After that, it's just coil it up or however you want to store it, you know, and until you get ready to make your basket. For one about that size, it would probably take about 30 inches, and you cut 12 of the same length, and then uh, you uh, divide those into six, and then uh, a half of one, and you cross the six 
together that you always make sure that the six that's in your right hand goes over the ones that's in your left hand or it, it won't come out right when you start weaving. Yeah, there's, there's still some. There's a good one. This one? Yeah, they're on the wall. This one. Well, this one here. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Do they help you with this a lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they know just about everything I know. They know how to gather, they know how to treat it. I was asking them the other day, did I teach you how to make baskets or did you just kind of <laughs> do it on your own? They're both, I call them baskets basket weavers because they're, they both can do it and as I said they know just everything that I know as far as gathering and, and how to treat it and everything and get it ready for to make a basket. So are you going to put color in this one or is it going to be? Um, yeah, my granddaughter she she can she she knows how to weave baskets and Vicky's got a son a grandson that that has uh, made baskets. Yep, I've got three generations. I do a lot of other things. As a, I, uh, I make baskets for a while and then I'll go back and go do something else. And But here lately it's just been mostly uh, baskets and those beads. And the beads, uh, I don't go out and gather it. Jane gives me their remnants, <laughs> so I, that's where I make mine beads from, but there's still lots of steps to it. Anyway, you roll them, and then you uh, punch holes in them. I'm kind of amazed, you know, that there are still so many out there that don't know how. There's so many out there that still wants to learn. It makes me feel like Especially if they're, if I know they're really interested, you know, and want to carry on, that's really important, you know, because uh, maybe one of these days, you know, they, nobody may not be around to, <laughs> to teach them how to do this, and there's just not very many of them that's doing the traditional read. I really feel blessed, you know, of being able to do to do what I do, you know, and uh, and I never dreamed that I would be doing this when I was, when I first started to school, then couldn't even understand English, you know, so that's really, I'm really, I'm just amazed and how things can turn out, you know, so I'm really, I'm just uh, thankful, you know, and I just have to keep going, take care of everybody else. <laughs> <You know? laughs> He's won the high school state championship four times and now has his sights set on one of the top-ranked college-level wrestling programs in the country. Wyatt Sheets comes from a well-known wrestling family, but attributes most of his success to determination and practice. He's ranked number seven nationally in the nation on a couple of different polls. Probably Wyatt's best attribute is his mental toughness. He's able to put himself through things that people could only dream of. I'm definitely proud of how far he's came and it's really inspiring for to see somebody that works that hard. And so every time he wins, I'm super proud because I know how hard he worked for that. He uh, always does his work, nose to the grindstone finds a way to win, kind of all of the recipe for success.
my name's Wyatt Sheets, and I'm a state champion wrestler for Stella High School. I started in, I think, first grade. I was like five years old. Yeah, my dad's always coached me since I've grown up. He's the one who got me started. I never, there's like a different, there's novice and open. And novice is like where the beginners start out and work your way up to the open. I never really got to do the novice, so <laughs> they just kind of threw me out there with the wolves, and I'm kind of beginning to lead the pack, so. In high school, I've won state three times, and then I'll be going for my fourth one this weekend. Out of state, all American, I've all American maybe four or five times. I've been coaching Wyatt Sheets for four years. He's an, an exceptional kid to coach. He's a, he's a tireless worker. You know, it's bittersweet this year because it's coming to an end and everything, but he's going on to bigger and better things, and uh, he hasn't cracked the surface of what he's going to do. He's going to do big things. He's just that kind of kid. The sacrifices that he really does make. I mean, all the kids are going to a dance or they're getting to go do things. And he's involved in a lot of things that he has to say no to because he has wrestling practice or a tournament. To me, that's the real sacrifice that he does because he's giving up something that he would have fun doing, but he's going after his goals. When I'm not wrestling, yes, I do love hunting and fishing. Fishing's probably one of my favorite because I cut a lot of weight during the summer and that's what I go do. It just keeps my mind off the food and all the drinks. But hunting, fishing, trapping, um, I shoot archery. Yeah, I look up to him a lot because everybody says he's the toughest, the meanest wrestler there ever was. When I was little, we would always go to duels you know, at OSU. My dad wrestled there, of course. I think he won 74 matches in a row. It's the third best in OSU history, so he's pretty good. I kind of want to break his records more than anything else, so that's kind of what drives me also. Well, I think one of the reasons why you know we we signed Wyatt Sheets is obviously his his work that he's put in. You know, just knowing that, that this kid's done it uh, by himself with his dad and his family, and I'm excited about having him. Well, I think for Wyatt, you know, this is an opportunity for him to go down in history for not only uh, not only to win four, but uh, to be the first one from Stillwell to do something like this. This is a great matchup. I mean, this is a tough matchup. Try to win your fourth championship. So nothing's given, you know. Um, if he wins tonight, he's going to earn every bit of it because this is a good wrestler. From Stillwell, White Sheets. Focus, discipline, self-sacrifice, hard work, and determination. The rest is just heart. In early 1832, the Cherokee Nation had been shaken up by the federal government's attempts to seize more Cherokee land after the passage of the Indian Removal Act. Settlers were moving onto Cherokee land in the southeast, and Cherokees were being forced out. U.S. military forces had invaded the nation, non-Cherokee intruders were staking claims on tribal land, and the Cherokee chiefs were threatened with arrest if they met for their annual tribal council session. A delegation consisting of Cherokee leaders John Martin, Elias Boudinot, John Ridge, and William Shorey Cootie traveled to Washington months earlier, 
and remained through the spring of 1832, appealing to Congress to intervene and enforce the treaties that protected the Cherokee's right to occupy their lands. In this document presented to Congress, the delegates describe in detail the extraordinary circumstances that were, quote, threatening the very existence of their nation and the peace and happiness of the whole community. As an example, they wrote, an intruder came into the territory, stole a Cherokee ferry boat, sold liquor and constructed buildings, including a post office for which he acted as postmaster, all illegally on land belonging to Cherokee citizens. The 1830s saw the beginning of the official Indian removal policies, with government agents traveling through the Cherokee Nation urging citizens to relocate with promises of provisions, compensation, and land in the West. Despite the Cherokee Nation's pleas and efforts, some felt like relocation would be their ultimate fate, years before the Trail of Tears would displace the majority of the tribe to present-day Oklahoma. So on April 10, 1832, a group of 500 Cherokees, slaves, and whites who had been living with the Cherokees left their homelands for Indian Territory in one of the first official pre-Trail of Tears immigration parties. They joined other Cherokees who had already immigrated west of the Mississippi and who had in fact already established a tribal government in 1824, calling themselves the Cherokee Nation West. Let's talk Cherokee. April. Kawani. Kawani. Springtime is in April. Kawani. Kala kila. Go gei ge so i. Kawani. Kawani. Kala. Kala. Kila. Kila. Go gei. Go gei. Ge so i. Ge so i. Buzzard. Suli. Suli. The buzzard is soaring high. Suli. Kalala di. Kanohili to hoi. Suli. Suli. Kalala di. Kalala di. Kanohili to hoi. Kanohili to hoi. Sun. Nada. Nada. The sun is shining. Nada. Agalia. Nada. Nada. Agalia. Agalia. This year's Bassmaster Classic Fishing Tournament is being celebrated as a huge success, bringing thousands of fans to northeastern Oklahoma and to Grand Lake of the Cherokees. Dozens of professional anglers fished Grand Lake for three days and weighed in each night at Tulsa's BOK Center. Cherokee Nation citizen Jason Christie was in the lead the first two days, but another Oklahoma native, Edwin Evers, took home the first place trophy after a huge day three win. The Cherokee Nation's Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Tulsa was a major sponsor of the event. Principal Chief Bill John Baker says no matter who takes home the trophy, the tournament is a win for our region. Last time it had an economic impact on northeastern Oklahoma of over $25 million, and we expect it to be bigger and better this year. To learn more about the Bassmaster Classic, go to oco.tv and click on links mentioned. County officials help the Cherokee Nation celebrate the completion of a $1.7 million bridge project. The Wycliffe Bridge in Mays County, Oklahoma was rated unsafe for travel with an 18.5% sufficiency rating. The tribe used funds from the Tribal Transportation Program budget to fund the project, which included repaving nearly half a mile of roadway on the site. The Cherokee Nation completed more than 72 miles of roadway and two bridge projects in fiscal year 2015 for more than $7.1 million. Lawmakers at the state capitol learned all about the Cherokee Nation and its impact on the state at this year's Legislative Day. Principal Chief Bill John Baker and other tribal leaders met with Oklahoma Secretary of State and Cherokee Nation citizen Chris Binge and other lawmakers. As Chief Baker was recognized on the House and Senate floors, he urged lawmakers to invest in education. We ask them to, to find a way and, and pray that they do to fully fund education, to continue roads and bridges, to do the core things that give the state of Oklahoma the opportunity to be great. Several Cherokee Nation departments also set up booths in the Capitol Rotunda to share information about their programs. To learn about other Cherokee Nation news, visit anadisco.com or go to oco.tv and click on links mentioned.
Ryan Lee Smith is a contemporary Cherokee artist who uses found items to create everything he does. He lives on the land he grew up on here in Oklahoma and says that's what inspires him more than anything. My name is Ryan Lee Smith. I'm from Creek County, Oklahoma, Bristow, born in Tahlequah. I'm a painter and a sculptor. I learned in art school exactly what the rules were and that they were completely ridiculous. And I sold abstracts complete, you know, non-objective pieces for 20 years. It was still a little contrived, you know. It just felt like I was working harder before I got here, and now it just flows out. Now it's just, you know, it's uh, effortless. I left for a while, came back, and when I got back, that's when it all started making sense, man. Like, that's when I felt guilty for taking all of it for granted, you know, and I was just hi hypersensitive just to everything. Oh, the, the creeks I used to play in, the giant rocks, it was, uh, still is, just full of sentiment. I couldn't do it in the middle of town, that's for sure. We're more alike, really, than my husband just shakes his head at us. Oh, Both yeah, us. he doesn't want to, you don't want to tell him what you're doing with something. Mm -mm. First piece he done me was uh, chalk, and it's a, it's a big bass. Our minister loves his artwork. He thinks that Ryan captures the eyes, the spirit of the, he said, Ryan, you've got the spirit. He did him a crow, and he loved his crow because he said, through his eyes, he could see Ryan ha having the feeling as he was doing it. My grandmother, you know, that's where my all my values come from. Who do you most want to emulate? You know, who who taught you the things that you use today? You use to make your decisions. You use to, you know, feel excitement. You know, there's everybody. You know, has somebody like that. I'm sure. Um, I met my wife in Colorado. She was going to school at Fort Lewis. I was just running around, yeah, in Durango. And when I met her, I really came on strong. She goes, hey, I've been looking for you for a long time, you know, I said, oh. <laughs> it worked. I did her a painting, too. I'll show you the painting. This one is my favorite one. He had said he had a dream where he was in the woods and there was a bear and an eagle hugging, and it was like they were dancing. I told him that my Indian name was you know, like a little bear walking down a path, and he goes, hey. And then he came back a couple days later with this. That was us then, the dream it had to be, because it was before he, it was like right before we had met and started dating. So I had always thought that was neat. I couldn't do this if, you know, someone didn't make the nest, like, just right. Because, you know, you gotta have a good nest to go crazy, man. I mean, I rely on her for everything, you know. She takes care of the, our two boys, which I got the third one, third king, in the next week. But yeah, very fortunate to have an understanding partner. That's what I do everything for. I do every single thing, you know. Standing right here for that same reason, you know. The work that I'm doing now is more than more authentic, it's more than more genuine, it's like a gift, it just comes out. There's so many things I wanna just recreate, represent, build and tear up and burn down and it's hard to contain. I'm building this crazy uh, sculpture in the middle of the pasture. I'm building a house in the shape of an eagle. I'm not in any big hurry and I'm just doing it by myself with all re repurposed materials. Each one of these bays will be like, that's the heart of the bird with it right there in the center. And each one of these bays will be like a different, like maybe a level and go, the one will go t -t 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 like that and kick that wing out so you can see each other from each tip, you know, from one end to the other. 
it's a faith game, man. And I have 100%, you know, confidence. I'm certain, I'm convinced that it's all gonna work out. Definitely being in the moment and not hindsight or careful planning and forethought and stuff like that, it's, it sounds crazy to say it out loud, but it really is. You know, if I'm down completely, just, you know, 30 hours from home and no money and I gotta cry all the way, you know, back across the country and I know that something is happening. And now I realize that at that moment when I feel like going crazy and quitting, if I can be in that moment and know that that's, I'm feeling that way at that second, I can make myself just persevere, just Oh, just a little bit further, and it's always like whew, ten times better than what than, than what I was planning, you know. We've provided a link to Ryan's website on ours. Just go to oco.tv and click on links mentioned. Next time on Oco Voices of the Cherokee People. The little known story of a Cherokee farm boy who won the biggest race of his time. How Andy Payne went from running the dirt roads of Oklahoma to international celebrity. The history and fanfare of the transcontinental foot race of 1928. We hope you enjoyed our show and remember you can always watch entire episodes and share your favorite stories online at oco.tv. There is no Cherokee word for goodbye. We say, Dona Dago Ha'i. We'll see each other again. So until next time, Wado. Huge organizations can't control the wildfire. How is it that somehow I can do something to my house to keep it from burning down? It's not a matter of controlling the wildfire. It's a matter of changing those conditions of the house and its immediate surroundings. I think it's important to be active because it's fun and it just keeps me in shape. CHIP is an extra insurance that covers the cost in case there's an injury. We can get your family covered with insurance. 